It's time for this week's new comics. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host Shane, with me as always is... Amy! <laughs> so it's that time of the week again, it's new comics and there's a lot of Batman this week. A as lot always. of Batman this week. Um, but yeah, we got some cool comics, um, including some a really cool sort after second print. Yes, finally. Yeah. So, um, shall we start... We was meant to do a podcast about SCCG, but it's sort of SC, S, no, SCCG is us. SD. S D San Diego. San Diego. Yeah. SDCC. That's that one as well, but yeah. we didn't get a chance. Maybe we'll have a chat at the end. Um, wife got in the way. Yeah. Some other things. Just busy, bro. We are busy people. Busy. Busy people. Over there, signing autographs, <laughs> taking pictures, <laughs> selfies <laughs> with people. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, start where we always start. Yeah. With the Indies. Yeah. Um, would My you like to go first? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we have, first of all, is issue number four. Is it issue number four? I think so. It is. Yeah. Of Ant, which I haven't seen in a bit. I Things forgot about it. massively delayed. Yeah. I forgot about it, to be completely honest, but I remember reading it, and I thought it was really cool. I love the story behind it, and... Yeah, I researched a lot into it because that was one of the first comics that I ever wrote a review for that Laura asked me to write. So yes. I know like my knowledge about Ant, so I'm excited to see it back in the shop. I'm looking forward to reading what's going on there. We then have issue number 10 of Basilisk from Boom. Great reads. We then have from Image, The Closet, issue 3, which has been quite popular. I read the first issue and I was like, oh, this concept. It's really freaky, really like we get a lot of horror, really, and it's yeah. really good. Have you read it? Problem? No. Oh. It's on my list. <laughs> on the list to read. I got about 20 days of comics to read. So. Nice. Yeah, same. We then have Cyberpunk Blackout. And then we have a brand new issue number one from Image as well, The Dead Lucky. It's a pretty cool cover. Which is really cool. We then have from Dark Horse, Frankenstein, New World. All part of the Hellboy um, universe. Ooh. So. We then have I Have... Sneaked a little peek of this while I was bagging and boarding today. It's called Golden Rage, which is meant to be like a play on words for Golden Age. And obviously it is about a ragey grandma, from what I read. I'm not sure if that's right, but she looked pretty badass. So I'm probably going to read that, and I'll let you guys know next week what I thought of it. I'm excited to read that. We then have the next issue of I Hate This Place. Or which, the other version. Yeah, the, the explicit version that I shall not repeat. Terrible. We then have issue number four of Metal Society, which I did read the first issue for. Me and Tristan have talked about it in the shop. And it's such a cool concept, like dystopia and all that sort of stuff. So if you're into that, then Metal Society is definitely the comic that you should be reading. We then have issue number 11 of Sweet Paprika, which is obviously just Sweet Paprika. It's not suitable for work. Mm. We then have the last, so this is issue five of five for Radiant Red. So if you're reading that story, this is where it comes to a close now. We then have the scumbag, which looks really cool. Actually, cool. very cool. We then have the spawn installments for this week. So we have Scorched, issue number eight, and then we have Spawn, issue number 332. And then finally, on my independent pile this week, we have issue number 44 of The Walking Dead Deluxe, which is obviously the reprint, but in colour. That's me. Yeah, Done. Cool. Uh, for me this week, we got uh, the new Magic the Gathering number 17. There's the Go Go Power Rangers. It's the Mighty Morphin pad number 22. Great cover. Um, Rogue Sun, really great read. If you get a chance to pick it up. This is number 7, I believe. Could be wrong. We'll find Could out. be right. Don't know. I'm sure it's number 7. It's number 6, it says at the top. I didn't even know why I'm opening the top. <laughs> didn't even read it. Number 6. Um, Survival Street. Now, I quite like the look of this. It seems quite interesting. That is pretty cool. So I'm going to pick that bad boy up. And it's a list of things that I need to read. Uh, Time Before Time, really great reads. For all you Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fans, especially if you've just seen the San Diego Comic-Con for the new film coming out next year, uh, that's a pretty cool cover. Uh, so it's the Armageddon game, which just looks proper full on. Proper. I'm interested. Uh, Scotty Young's Twig, number three, number four, sorry, is in. Oh, I've done this in so long, but I keep missing that. 
Philadelphia, really great if you're a vampire fan. Baton of Vampires, I don't read Philadelphia. I read the first few, quite enjoyed it, but I didn't carry on. However, Little Monsters, loving this, if you get a chance, pick it up. And then that second print that is going to be very sought after, 8 Billion Geniuses. Yeah. Genius. Um, geniuses? Gen Genies. Genies, that's what I meant to say. What she said. <laughs> like Aladdin. Um, so, 8 Billion Genies. Uh, yeah, this has just been picked up for a show of Amazon? Yeah. I believe yeah, it's yeah. been picked up for a show already, um, just after the first issue. So, the first issue went massive, hence why there's a second yeah. print. And I've got a feeling there will be a third as well, because I think the second print is already sold out. So yeah, oh, yeah, so yeah, some decent stuff there. Eh? Yeah, if you get a chance to pick up the old monsters, really good. Um, on to the Dees of the Seas. The Dees of the Seas. <laughs> what have we got? I've got Batman for days. I've literally all I got. So Batman. much Batman. I've got everything that's <clears throat> not Batman. Shall I'll do mine first because you want to talk about your thing video. Anyway, so uh, so we got Batman 126. Uh, Fall of Dark Knight starts here, I believe, and ready to go. Uh, the final part of Batman Killing Time. This has been a pretty decent read. I've read up to three. Um, it's only obviously a mini series, but I quite enjoyed what I've read so far. Um, Batman represents the Red Hoods. Uh, sorry, the White Knight presents the Red Hoods. Uh, that ties in with the White Knight series. Very cool cover. I like this uh, Jason Todd. I think it's Jason Todd. I assume it's Jason Todd because I haven't read any of this. <laughs> no. It's the Red Hoods. I like this I Red Hoods. Uh, Flashpoint. More Batman, number four, number six. Um, and then we have, is this the new ongoing? I, I don't it's know. It's not ongoing, sorry, it's a mini series, but I think it ties into the new to uh, new arc. So we got the one shot that's going to introduce you, and then part one of six. I think this was supposed to come last week, but it's a, it's a week late. So Batman for days. So much Batman. So much Batman. It's almost as if he's very popular. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Right. It's Batman then. Which is Batman. We have Black Adam, the Justice Society Files Cyclone. Obviously, Black Adam film coming out soon. Yeah. Well, I say soon. When's it actually coming out? I don't know. It's supposed to be out, wasn't it? Yeah. It's got the date. I think it's September, October, October maybe. Exciting. We then have issue number three of seven for Dark Crisis, which is currently ongoing. We then have eight of 12, so we're kind of nearing the end of DC vs Vampires which has been really popular and obviously Black Canary on the cover looking badass as ever I've, one of my favourite characters I love her costume she's mega cool we then have the new champion of Shazam she's got the power that seems like a bit of me um, I've not read any Shazam comics before but I watched the film and it's probably one of my favourite um, DC films it's probably my second favourite never watched it you've not watched it no. <gasps> it's good I've genuinely. never watched Shazam or Aquaman I've not no interest. Are you being serious? Yeah. Shazam is. I'm not really interested good. in Black Adam either. I'm, I'm gonna really watch not. It, I mean, I'll probably watch it, even though it's the Wayne the Rock Johnson. I wasn't. No, I'm not interested. Don't disrespect the Rock. It's the Rock. Sorry, the Rock. Come at me, bro. Sorry, Rock. <laughs> we then have Harley Quinn. Is that I think the current uh, arc is called To Infinity, which is number eighteen of it ongoing. She's looking cool. What mischief is she getting up to now? But my big release for this week, the favourite thing that I'm going to be picking up, I love every single cover that they've done, is Poison Ivy, issue number three, which also has Harley Quinn on the cover with Pamela. And I am so looking forward to reading this. Like, this is probably one of my most anticipated comics that are currently being released. Probably this and Daredevil are probably my top two at the moment. So from two different publishers, this I'm just really excited, and it's only on issue three, so if you want to get into reading Poison Ivy, I would definitely recommend starting from issue number one and starting to pick it up, because it's so good. I'm so glad that she has a solo run. Yeah. Cool. Cool. That's a very cool cover. I quite, it's so it is, sick, is I like it? the colour. That's my sort of thing. I like sketch, but that's not quite sketch, but, you know, black and white. Colours. Match my dark, dark soul. Oh, oh dear. Right then, let's move on to the Marvels. The Marvels. Uh, right, so I'll jump ahead again yeah. quickly. Um, got an X-Men 92. For those of you um, who have seen it, there's clues in the MCU. And obviously some stuff was mentioned at the Comic-Con of Comic-Cons. So, um, but that's a really good read if you're into your X-Men from the 90s. Um, I've read number one or two, and I'm interested to see where it's going. I'm loving that. However, this 
Well, you talked about Daredevil, and I did enjoy the new one. Um, I'm absolutely loving Ghost Rider. If you get a chance to pick it up, really pick it up. It's a really great read. And it's built into such a... Percy's doing such a great job of building this new world, and he has things. He's a great writer, so that was great. Um, Moon Knight's been brilliant as well so far, and I've actually really enjoyed the first two of these. Have you read this? I've not, no. You need to read this. It's really fun. Is it? Yeah, it was really good fun. Yeah. Um, Spider-Man 2099, number five. And then we got Spider-Punk, who has been hinted at, or slipped up on, I believe, yeah. in the Spider-Verse, which doesn't surprise me. Um, and speaking of the Spider-Verse, look at that first segue. <gasps> oh my god! Edge of the Spider-Verse, number one, new in today. Is this the variant cover? No, it's the normal cover. cover. That's an amazing cover. Quite like that. So, yeah, so new Spider Verse. So, quite a lot of Batman, quite a lot of Spider Man. But good, great stuff. Makes sense. Yeah. Right, so I have issue number two of Mech Strike Monster Hunters. I have the Tales of Suspense featuring the power of Iron Man, which is obviously very cool. We then have a new issue, number one, Peach Momoko, or however people want to say the name, I hate getting it wrong, is Demon Wars, The Iron Samurai. So obviously, if you've been reading um, the, the, I've forgotten the name of what it was called before, Demon, Demon Days. Days, there we are. So if you've read Demon Days, she's back, and she's writing Demon Wars, which is very exciting. We then have the X-Men installments for this week. We have issue number five of Immortal X-Men, which is obviously a tie-in for the Judgment Day event that's currently going on. And then we have Legion of X. So if you're an X-Men fan, there you are. There's your, there's your pick this week. And then we have Iron Man issue number 22, which is a very epic cover. It's really cool. Very cool. That looks like Alex, Alex Ross. I could be wrong. Is it Alex Ross? Looks like it. Sure. <laughs> and then finally, I have issue number five of Star Wars, the Galactic Cruiser. Yeah. So interesting comics this week. Um, what about Batman? Batman. Not that we're moaning, but we are moaning DC. Come I am on. a little bit moaning, yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot of Batman. Come on. It's a lot of Batman. It reminds me like when uh, it would have been about 15 years ago when I still collecting. I didn't have the shop yet. Um, I was collecting everything X Men and Wolverine, yeah. and at one point there was twenty seven comics coming out a month of X Men and Wolverine. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, Batman's getting there or thereabouts. Eh? But yeah, I'm really looking forward to um, picking up some of these. I'm looking forward to the Edge of Spider Verse, definitely, and then obviously picking up little monsters. And I'll still pick up Batman, but not all of them. But yeah, interesting. Yeah. So San Diego. San Diego. We'll do a quick, quick San Diego. Yeah. Uh, any good news coming out? Can you remember? Uh, two new Avengers films coming out. Yeah. Avengers Secret Wars. That's not the first place I thought you'd go. What else was there? My banging. Oh, oh, oh! Yeah. There it is. <laughs> it's too good to be true. That's why. Text you at three o'clock in the morning. With this. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's. I'm not even joking. That's genuinely how I found out. I woke up and I went on Twitter and there was nothing on there. I I don't know why. And then I checked my messenger on Facebook and I saw that I had like three messages off of you. And I looked at it and I literally was like, Oh my god, did have a beyond? Yeah. No. Born again. Oh, born again. Why did I say beyond? Oh, oh, it's because I got Spider Man in my head. But born again, did have He's back. She Hulk. End of the trainer. With yeah. Yellow. Yellow didn't, suit. Didn't need that though, did we? I don't really want the yellow suit. The suit I looks don't great. It does look great, but I still also, with the exposure up, it was yellow. I'm not a fan of the yellow suit. Um, I don't mind the yellow suit. I think it's great. It's Frank Miller. I'm a big Frank Miller fan. Obviously, comic company Sin City. Um, but, yeah, I'd rather the grey. Yeah. yeah I, mm, we've had words about this in the past. I'm worried about what they're going to do. With it. Yeah, I'm worried about what they're going to do with... Um, yeah, I, no. the fact he's in She-Hulk and then going to be an Echo, and I'm just looking at these thinking, oh, man. Is you got to this... have faith. you got to have faith. you you got to. you got to think, these, this is the same people that came out with Moon Knight, which was really good. So, be you know, Disney, Disney, Yeah, but okay. Moon Knight could have been a lot better. Like, well, a lot more violent. They did tone it down massively. You can't tone down Kingpin. That's true. Because then, like you said, the last time, it just makes it look a bit silly, mm. doesn't it? So we've got D23 coming up. Oh. 
which yeah. I think is because we're, we're going to get all the big announcements. Yeah. Because obviously they showed. I was surprised that there wasn't. There was a massive gap. There wasn't a lot of. I thought they might have teased like a bit of an X Men sort of thing. I know they're coming out with the um the house. Of... I think that's what's coming in D twenty three. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, but there's also I don't know how true this is, but it was on IGN the other day that um, until twenty twenty five. All the previous X Men yeah, cast, the contract, isn't yeah, it? have to be cast as. So if they don't want to do it, then we're not getting X Men for the next few years. That's true. Unless they buy their contracts, which is another possibility. That is also true. It's Disney, so, so I wouldn't be it interesting. Faster. But to be honest, the people that were cast in the X Men films, I wouldn't be mad if they bring the majority of them back. Like Sophie Turner for Jean Grey, I agree with. I thought that was good. Um, the actress that played Jubilee was really good. Um, I will advocate for I'm... Ben Hardy. To be in the MCU, like with all my heart, because no, I think I I'd rather a fresh. Would you? Yeah. I. Loads of people have been saying Taron Egerton as Wolverine. I can see it, and I can see it. I I wouldn't be too mad at that. Um, I would like James McAvoy back as Charles Xavier. I think they need to go somewhere else a bit, but I don't like the casting rumors on you as the guy who played Gus in um, Breaking Bad. Oh yeah, he's the he's the oh he's the um oh what's his name? He's in Mando. He's the one that takes a sword off, captures Grogu. Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. For I Professor see. X, I don't want that. And the reason I don't want that is plain and simple. I want a James McAvoy younger. So they can. Build, yeah, so yeah. they can slightly grow. I'm and I'm quite curious to see what they're going to do with Fantastic Four because they re-announced they were going to do yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. And then said it's not going to be an origin story. So i got to think they're going to be in their 30s, 40s. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see if he, if he does carry on with... Um, what's his name? John Kavinsky. As, yeah. Yeah. Or if Maybe. they go down a different route. I reckon I want them to stick with John Kravinsky and... That also means Doom is already in the MCU. Mm. And then Sue to be um, Emily Blunt. Yeah. Because I, I like Emily Blunt. I, I think they would... Because they're married, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I feel like if they'd be, they feed off of each other well. And I think uh, that she's a really good choice. But I don't know who I would want to play Emma Frost. She's my favourite, and I don't... I, I'm scared. I think you've got to get somebody <laughs> young to play... Yeah, I don't know. Jan Lee Jones in really suit the role. She was a bit... She was treated a bit ditzy, which I think, didn't think was fair. Cause she yeah. could pull, she's a very good actress, actually. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's interesting. What maybe, we need a ca- maybe we need a casting video. Maybe. Yeah. Dreamcast for the X-Men. But, okay, so we've got Secret Wars coming up after... There was a rumour that Sadie Sink is going to be in um, Thunderbolts as well. As... Oh, I don't know the name. She has purple hair. She got the name of the character but apparently Sadie Sink was rumoured to play someone from Thunderbolts okay. so I would like that to happen I think we're going to get a lot more Thunderbolts information at D23 yeah it's a good lineup they got yeah it is to be fair I feel like Florence Pugh is going to do an amazing job I know she's really popular yeah. because of the stuff she's got a big fan base around it yeah. but I think some people are discouraged off of celebrities because they have a big fan base and like their fans and stuff but Florence Pugh is genuinely just really talented yeah, so I is. think she's going to be really good she is. I quite like the idea of the Thunderbolts. I hope it's done not in the way of Suicide Squad. Yeah. I don't yeah. want it to be funny. It can yeah. be funny-ish, but it doesn't but have to be. Funny. Yeah, Do you it has what to I mean? be. Yeah. yeah. It has to be sort of quite. These are bad people. Yeah. They're genuinely bad people. There's no. There's no saving arc here. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know. I want them to take Yelena in a more. The comic accurate direction because I feel like as much as I enjoyed the Yelena that we got to see in Hawkeye, it's very different on how the comics Yelena probably would have reacted. I feel like the comics Yelena wouldn't have, even though I think Yelena and Kate do have a good relationship in the comics anyway, because I'm pretty sure um, back when Cuddy Thompson was writing the run, she was featured a bit in it, but it's just the fact of I think she would have been a lot more miss. Less is that the right word? Yeah, she's more straight there, she's yeah. just very to the point. Yeah. yeah, so I feel yeah. like the way that they've currently portrayed it, they're probably like, I don't know what direction they're gonna go in, but they've portrayed it as like Natasha is the more yeah, hard, yeah. but it should be the other way around. Like, 
Yelena is portrayed as like a she's funny and I did laugh at the stuff but I was like maybe we should just tone it like, yeah. a little bit even though her chemistry with H- Hayley Atwell Hayley Atwell no Hayley no. Steinfeld oh my god was really good so yeah okay well it'll be interesting to see where they go I'm interested to see how Loki season two goes oh yeah because that's quite important I didn't really like season one though I'm gonna watch it because I want to know where it goes but I didn't really like what they did with it no it's, it's, it's an interesting Overall, so we got Kang the Conqueror. Bigger and, picture. Yeah, I, I, I'm interested to see where that goes. And, yeah, the Secret Wars and Doc yeah. Doom, that's quite important. Doc Doom is into that story, so this will be interesting. I don't know. I'm, I'm looking forward to D23s in September, I believe. Nice. Um, So we'll find out more information then because we're going to get a look. I think we're going to get what we see. And I know there's a big gap, obviously, because he says phase six and there's like literally nothing. And then the two X-Men, uh, two Avengers films. But I think there's a lot more probably to slot in places as well. I was going to well. say, I want to know why that there's a six-month gap between the two Avengers films. I feel like that was done on purpose. Yeah. I want to know why they've done that and not left it yeah, I can't like see how they did with Infinity War and Endgame. Like, and why I also didn't... can't see Secret Wars being one film. Yeah. I can see it being like, that's the start. I the... feel like that they, even though they filed the copyright for it, I feel like they might change the names of the Avengers films like leading up to it. I feel like that they might switch it. I don't know why. But Maybe. they did that for a lot of them, didn't they? So. Maybe. It'll be interesting to see where we go and, um, yeah, how things uh, move forward because it's it's not, it seems not long, but it seems long, but it's not. Yeah. 2025 on it. Yeah. It's only three years. Was it 2025? Yeah, I think so. Oh, I'll be 20. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, wow. I know, that makes me feel old because the first... Marvel film that I saw was Guardians of the Galaxy in 2014, and I would have been no eleven. I yeah, would have been you eleven. Make, you, customers are turning off now, going, "I can't watch this anymore because she'll only be twenty and twenty one." Right? It's just like can't handle this. People are here. <laughs> Someone out there can't handle it. No, handle but it. do you know what I mean? That like Marvel has put out so much. Yeah. So people have grown up with it, like me. Um, compared to like as much as I love DC as well. It's weird how Marvel have made a connection with their fan base now, and yeah. how people are still watching, even though when they first started watching, that they were like only eleven, and now mm. they like grown up with it. That's... Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's the part of it, and the, the the good thing that I believe Marvel have done is they've grown, and you can call them comic book films, but they're sort of not because you can yeah you can slice off Guardians of the Galaxy as sci-fi. If you take away the name Captain America, Winter Soldier is just a thriller. Yeah. It doesn't need them characters per se to be a great film. It's a great film um, in total. It's just it's a Captain America film. Yeah. And it's got famous names that we know as yeah. in like famous characters, not famous people. Um, portraying them all. So it could be any sort of thriller film. And the same with Guardians of the Galaxy. And, you know, you can have your, your superhero films, your Spider Mans and your Avengers, but there's other parts of it that could just literally be, if you take that name away, that could be anything else. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I quite like it, but it'll be interesting to see where we go and what's coming. But yeah, so within within five years. Yeah. Or is it two thousand six, two thousand twenty six? Anyway, I within four. I, no, I think it was twenty five. It was five, wasn't it? Yeah. So within within three to four years, we got a lot of content. We have. We have. Pretty good. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm more looking forward to the films than the TV shows. No. But. Still, still, still I think we'll, we'll start seeing stuff standoffish as well. Yeah. Where it'll become one and done. Yeah. I don't think we're going to get a Moon Knight season two. And I'm not sure if you'll turn up again. You reckon? I, I don't know. There's something about it. Because I think something... Well, I, I think we'll find out in D23. Yeah. Because I think something would have been mentioned by now. Yeah. Or okay. something would have like appeared... I'm hoping they go down the Midnight Sun route and like you we yeah. you get Doctor Strange, Ghost Rider and, and then you can introduce Ghost Rider and Yeah, so I'd like to see Speaking that. Speaking of, I was also surprised um that the slate didn't include the Shang Chi sequel. So yeah. it was confirmed that it was gonna get a sequel, like a while ago I think. But now I'm just thinking of where it's actually gonna fit in place. Like is it actually gonna be like four years away for the next So there's a hint going around that the Shang-Chi, well, not the Shang-Chi movie, but Shang-Chi will actually be part of the MCU's Illuminati. Because really? you've already sort of seen it. 
you should have got Bruce Banner there, who's the smartest man alive. Yeah. On the MCU planet. Yeah. Until Reed Richards turned up, because obviously you don't know. Uh, and then obviously you had Captain Marvel. Yeah. And you had Shang Chi. So it's just like this. Is this the start of like the Illuminati? That Illuminati. So be interesting. That would be cool. That um, would be very cool. Yeah. Right, I think that's uh, everything off. You just need to do your... Oh, yeah, of course. So, as you guys know, once we get to a 1,000 uh, subscribers on my YouTube, we are giving away a 9.8 Edge of Spider-Verse Fast Family Edition, which is obviously the first appearance of Spider-Gwen herself. So, if you want to win this, tell everyone about us and that we're so epic and we're so cool and that they should be subscribed to us yeah. on YouTube. And not just YouTube, you can also follow us on TikTok. You can keep up up to date with us on Facebook and you can also follow us on Instagram. Yeah. Who wouldn't want to do that? And so we're giving this bad boy away. So don't forget, like, comment, share, subscribe. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's great. Cheers guys. Thank you very much for watching. Good night, good best, all the best. Bye. Bye now. Thanks a lot for watching the video guys. If you have any questions, leave in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much. Good night, God bless, all the best.